Hey everyone, welcome to the Rogue One Shelf Series video. Sorry, I could not help but to start the video that way. We're going to jump right in with the Rebel Fleet Trooper. This is a Steve Austin figure arts head that I put on the Rebel Fleet Trooper body with some sticky tack you can see in the back there. I can never remember who I got this idea from. It was a couple people in the community, so if that was you, let me know and I'll tag you in the description. Next, we have a very important character, soon to be the star of his own show, Cassian Andor. This is the same vest that he is wearing. It's on twice. I took it from a different figure I had of him without the photo reel, and I just painted it to look like that puffy vest that he wears in the movie. We're gonna stick him right here in the middle since he is one of the main characters of this film. Next is the other main character, Jin Erso. This is the newer Black Series release with the photo reel head. Super big improvement from the original, although the body still is a bit dated and could use a little bit of an update. The knee joints are pretty weak in particular, but we'll go ahead and stick her right here in the front as well. I did use some of the photo reel heads to update the alternate bodies for Cassian and Jin. I think these look great. I really like this look for Cassian especially, but we're only going to have one of each character in the shelf, so we'll just set these aside for now. I was so excited to get Saw Gerrera finally released in the Black series. I did a custom weathering video for him. If you would like to check that out, it is on my channel. I do some dark washing, some dry brushing, some metallic details, all very simple stuff that you can do for pretty cheap. So if you're interested in learning that kind of thing, check out that video. I do love this figure, but he's a little bit larger of a character, so he's going to go kind of up here towards the back where he's not going to block anyone in the front. This figure is sorely in need of a re-release. I do have a custom head repainted by Tim's Toys. Thank you, Tim, for that. This looks so much better than the original. I'm really happy to have that. He's going to go over here behind Jin. He also has a pretty big cloak, so I'm not going to really put him too far up where he's going to block anyone. This Mafex Rogue One Darth Vader was on my wish list for a while, and then I found a user on Instagram that sold it to me for a little bit below the going rate. He still is quite expensive, he goes for about $200 if you find him on eBay or similar sites, but I do think this is the best 6 inch Vader. I really like comparing different figure lines because they are all very different in their articulation and design. On the left is figure arts, on the right is just the Black Series Death Trooper that came in the Amazon 3 pack. I really like both of these for different reasons, so I'm going to go ahead and put both of them here. They are such an iconic part of Rogue One, and I think we all remember the first time we saw these guys in live action. The ankles on my Black Series one are a little wonky, so I'm going to do my best to keep him standing straight. Next figure was up for pre-order through Target for almost a year, if not longer. Finally started showing up and has already been clearanced out. You can find him for about $12 or $13 right now at Target. That is Galen Erso. He's going to go right here, kind of splitting the Rebel and Imperial sections. Two of the coolest characters in Rogue One are definitely Baze Malbus and Chirrut Imwe. I did do a little bit of a matte spray on these as they were pretty shiny. These obviously have the newer face print. The bodies do feel a little bit dated. They have the double jointed knees and the pins and the joints and just things that make these feel a little bit old. They are from around 2016 when the movie came out of course, but with all of the new Black Series figures coming out with all of these advancements in the engineering and the technology, these definitely show their age just a little bit, but I'm happy to have these figures either way. Next up, we have the Jedi Patrol Trooper. This was a more recent release, which is great for anyone that had been waiting to get a Stormtrooper into the line, because you can take off all of the accessories and just have a standard Stormtrooper. I did do a little bit of weathering on this to give it that sandy texture on the armor. He's going to go right here over towards the Imperial side. Princess Leia didn't have a huge role in the film, but her cameo at the end definitely was memorable. I also just love this figure from Figure Arts so much that I try to get it into my shelves as often as possible, so she's gonna go right here, kind of towards Krennic. She's not Imperial, but I'll put her over here by her dad. Next we have a custom that I made a few years ago of Melshi. This is the character that we see in the Battle of Scarif. It's just a Hoth Trooper, but I thought the outfit matched pretty closely, and I would like to take another crack at this sometime with some better colors and some better paintwork now that I've learned a little bit more about customizing. These K2SO figures are pretty close. The one on the left is from the Black series, and the one on the right is Figure Arts. I was really curious about getting this one in the Figure Arts line because I do like the cleaner paint jobs and a little bit more of a metallic finish, but overall I think the scale and the articulation and just the general feel of the one on the left. He does have one of my hexagon stands that has a back support piece for figures like him or General Grievous that kind of no matter what you do they always seem to fall over on your shelf. So that is available on my Patreon in case you're interested in adding that to your collection. Seeing Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One was pretty cool. I watched this movie with someone that wasn't too familiar with Star Wars and they didn't even realize that he was CGI until I told them. So I'd count that as a pretty successful job by Lucasfilm. He's going to go over here next to Vader and Leia. I truly think he is one of the best Black Series figures ever. I do have a custom hand on him from a Marvel Legends figure. Next we have another custom Nine Num. This is on a Rose Tico body with a General Leia vest that I painted and the head is 3D printed. I either got it from Twin Suns Casting when they were 
still around or Outer Rim Traders, so go ahead and give them a Google. I was so excited to get this Bodhi Rook figure when it came out. I was able to pre-order it from Best Buy of all places and they happened to get it in really early so I went and picked that up. That was super fun. But I think this is a really great figure. I did give him a matte finish as he is very shiny straight out of the package. He's going to go right here with the rest of our heroes. I usually don't like Figure Arts Troopers a little bit too much. I think their proportions can be a little bit weird, but I thought this one on the right looked pretty cool. The one on the left is just a Black Series figure, but I really love the designs of both of these. They're gonna go together on the Imperial shelf over on the left here. I bought a bunch of Figure Arts Troopers as a bundle deal. I don't know if I would have picked this figure up though on its own. Next we have the Imperial Hover Tank Driver. I think this is such an amazing character design. This was available in the archive line for those who missed it the first time around. I don't know if we'll be seeing these guys in Andor, but I just really love that character design and he's gonna go right here in the front on the left. One of the things that made Rogue One feel so authentically 70s was the hairstyle, so this guy's sideburns and mustache are a must-have in the Black Series. This was a Target release that came out a few months ago, along with the Galen Erso figure. He is currently on clearance as well for about $13. You really forget how many incredible trooper designs there were in Rogue One. This is the Shore Trooper Squad Leader. He's designated by his camo piece around the waist, as well as the blue stripe. I really love the way that these look as well, and it was a treat seeing the Shore Troopers in The Mandalorian Season 2 in that scene on the Imperial base. Now we've got Mon Mothma by Fredericks Figures. I just saw this for the first time today. This outer white piece is actually from a 3.75 inch Royal Guard, but Frederick did all of the necklaces and all of that by hand, as well as all of the paint on the hair and the face. Absolutely unbelievable work. There's even pastel work on the hands, giving them a little bit more life. She's definitely going right here on the front. Completing our shelf is Admiral Raddus. This is also a custom by Fredericks Figures. The legs are from Cassian Andor, and the head and the torso are 3D printed. This totally blew my mind when I saw it. It's fully articulated. He even added joints in the shoulders, even though that is like cast plaster. I just... Yeah, just look at this, it's unbelievable. He's going right here in the front as well. I unfortunately can't keep either of those figures, but maybe someday I will convince Frederick to make me some. That concludes our Rogue One shelf series. I am so excited to be diving back into the original trilogy era, and with the Andor series coming out, we get a lot of that OT goodness coming up soon. If you guys like this type of video, please leave a like and subscribe. I have some more videos coming out. I'm going to be doing a lot of different shelf series once I finish the movies, going into like favorite aliens, favorite clones, favorite troopers, that sort of thing, as well as new Black Series reviews all the time. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.